Hey, do you see that? That's pretty messed up, what was happening there. They want to ban our hobby, they want to take our freedoms away. It just sucks that like, it's our hobby that's getting uh, super regulated and not certain other people's hobbies. Pledge yourself to the, the US ARC army before it's too late and arm up with your she, he's and they's. Arm up with your scaly she, he's and they's. Arm up with your scaly or and or gooey she, he's and they's. Oh, there's a pillow just clearly in frame. Anyway, hello, welcome back to the Bonji Frogs Reptile YouTube channel. I have a snake, her name is Athena. Athena is technically a male, but reptiles have no concept of gender pronouns, so because I named her Athena up front, that's what we're gonna refer to her as from now on, because I'm set in my ways and I will not change. Athena is a Baron's Racer, a mildly venomous snake from Argentina who is very, very beautiful, and she is currently living in a moderately, in a pretty good sized cage, actually. The cage that she's in is a three foot by three foot, is a 36, is a three foot by one and a half foot, three foot long, oh my God, start over. It is a three foot long by one and a half foot deep by three foot tall mesh terrarium, I believe made by Exoterra or Zoomed, let me double check. Not that this is even really important, but you know, for posterity's sake, right? I went over to look and I don't even remember. It's cool and it's worked fine, but I have some problems with it. I bought this cage, off of some guy on Craigslist who actually kind of almost ended up scamming me. She was originally in the current cage that my frogs are in and that cage was just way too small for her. So I bought that screen cage off of this dude on Craigslist. It was all torn up. I paid like a few extra bucks to have the, the mesh fixed up. When I actually got the cage and I assembled it, not all the pieces were there. Like one of the pieces was missing. And so I had to contact the dude and be like, yo, uh, you're missing a piece. Can you get it out to me and meet me? And he's like, no man, sorry. I'm like, I can't meet up. I'm like, I'm too busy. And I'm like, no, you gotta meet up with me because like you, you screwed me and like I don't have all the pieces to this cage now. So you gotta do it. Got the extra piece from him. And I'm like, can you give me some of my money back for like making me come all the way out here because you forgot a piece? And he's like, all right, man, for sure. And he gave me like 20 bucks back. And he's like, by the way, you want to buy some weed? You're 17, bro. Also, weed is legal. I can just go to a dispensary right now and buy some weed if I really wanted to. So uh, needless to say, I, I did not support his small business. What? This has nothing to do with, this has nothing to do with the topic at hand. I want to update her setup for a number of reasons. The cage itself is not bad. In fact, it gets the job done just fine, but there's a few problems with it. The, the first problem is that it's not cute. Mesh is ugly. Uh, it also collects dust really easily. Secondly, there is a problem with the bottom of the mesh. You can see it says, beware of attack snake, beware of an atta of attack lizard. And it has some plastic in there <laughs> to cover up the hole because at the time I just didn't have enough money to pay to get that certain part fixed. Since then I, I have enough money now to get it fixed obviously, but I haven't wanted to go get it fixed because it would require me to disassemble the entire cage in order to do so. And that's just not something I wanted to do. Uh, additionally, the decor inside is, is actually not bad. It, I think that I, I set that cage up pretty well. Couple problems I have though. One, even though she loves sleeping in that bonsai tree, it's not very pretty. Two, there's a giant piece of dead driftwood that I want to use in an updated version of maybe my Aki monitor or Jeweled Lacerda's cage because I think it would fit better there. And currently it's just use, been using as like a base piece to put other pieces of wood off of. She is a messy snake and has pooped on a lot of her decorations and I haven't been able to clean them to the fullest extent without completely removing everything. I've been able to do some spot cleaning, like pulling some poop off and, you know, getting a towel, disinfecting some stuff, but there's poop in a lot of places and it's really gross and she doesn't deserve to be living in that. So I need to construct a new cage where it's easier for me to remove her decorations for cleaning. A lot of the plants in the cage are kind of just all over the place. Like I just kind of grabbed whatever was around and threw it in there. And again, it doesn't look bad. Like I think it looks okay, but I think it could look better. There's just random plants in there. Uh, the substrate sucks. It just doesn't look nice. It's the only thing I could use were these sort of thicker wood chips because if I use dirt or eco earth or anything, it would end up coming through the mesh and just making the top of Bosk's cage where she's currently sitting all dusty and dirty and gross. And I don't know, the, the wood chips just don't look very good. So I need a new substrate and I can't do that unless I have a better cage. That's what we're gonna upgrade. Luckily, I found this nice glass cage that is there, that is the exact same dimensions as that cage on Craigslist from some dude um, for like 200 bucks. So shout out to him for selling me that cage because all of the glass versions of that virgins all of the glass versions of that cage I could find new six seven hundred dollars used three four hundred sometimes five way too much money I'm trying to buy a house and uh, I can't afford to be spending that 
So here are some goals for this new cage. Athena is a strictly arboreal snake, which means she's like, she likes to climb. Currently, she has some pretty good options for climbing, but maybe I can add more. Hopefully I can, even though I'm taking away some of the branches, but I need to retain her ability to be able to climb kind of all over the cage. It'll be easier with the glass cage because I can rest the branches on the side of the glass rather than having to worry about them puncturing through the mesh. Right now, the way it's constructed, all of the branches are sort of freestanding or tied to the mesh with zip ties. And I'd rather just have them rest on the side of the cage because it's easier for me and it's just easier in general to take stuff out and clean it if it's resting on the side rather than secured or freestanding. Next goal for the cage is I just, it, I want better and increased visibility. The way that the cage is set up right now, mesh doesn't allow for the best viewing angles of the of Athena. Aw, Slinky's moving. Say hi to Slinky. Anyway, the glass cage will allow for better visibility, which, you know, will make the cage will, will allow me a chance to make the cage a little bit prettier and, you know, nicer looking. I want a larger emphasis on what Athena or the Baron's Racer's natural environment looks like. That's where we go into the research part of the video. I'm going to break this video down into three parts, right? We're going to do a little bit of research on what Baron's Racer's habitats look like so I can assemble some fake plants and whatnot. Uh, we're going to go buy uh, some extra fake plants and also take a look at my inventory on hand. And then third, we're going to build it. So let's do it. Let's do some online shopping. I mean, research. Okay, so I have this little presentation here uh, all laid out so I can just like copy and paste pictures of the natural environment. Baron's Racers come from South America. They're native to Paraguay, Paraguay, Bolivia, and Argentina. They live in savannas and forest woodlands. I guess we can start by looking up Baron's Racer Natural Habitat. So you see, I've already Googled it. There's really not a lot of info out there. There, These snakes just like barely have a digital footprint online. It's kind of crazy. There's, there's really nothing here. Like there's this nice little picture with the moss and the leaves and you know, it's all just pictures of the snake. There's a stock photo. All right, I'll take this, I'll take this one. Wow, it's really, all it is is just macro shots of these snakes. I guess it's not horribly complicated. Wow, that's it, that's, <laughs> it's literally just one page of Google images. Okay, I gotta click see more on what the, wow, that's, the, and that's the see more. It's just, it's just more of the same thing over and over. Okay, well here, here's a good picture showing it in like some dead grass and stuff. So it looks like a lot of the, the plants I have in there, which is these sort of longer, like taller, like thinner, like grassy, like bushes actually may hold up. So I'll put that this here just for posterity's sake. I'm not gonna get my hands on anything dead, but it's good to have. Forest woodland. Oh, okay. Okay, the Grand Chaco. All right, so this appears to be a little region in Paraguay that has, you know, some cool animals, some cool savannas. Wow, this is not what I was expecting the habitat to look like. Interesting. Wow, so there really are a lot of tall grasses. Here, here, I will, I'm gonna save this picture. I like this one. Okay, there's some low ferns as well. So what I could do is I could do a mix of these taller grassy plants as well as some smaller uh, lower hanging ferns. It's all very wooded, but not very leafy. They clearly don't live in the Amazon. They're more to these sort of temperate areas that aren't quite as tropical and they're more, you know, grassland oriented, which is kind of what we knew going into it. All right, you know what? This is some good stuff here. This is good stuff. Here's all the pictures we have. Could be better, but you know, we're working with what we got. So a couple things I'm gonna do now, right? I'm gonna take stock of all the stuff that I currently have and I'm gonna do a little bit of shopping and you know what, let's just go shopping right now. One of these days I gotta get like a camera or something because filming on my phone is, uh, it's just not working out the way I want it to. Okay, so let's go shopping. Note to self, when you want to buy a Prius because you need a new car, don't buy the smallest one again. I just went to the bank. I need to get some food, Taco Bell, McDonald's, something like that. We're going to go to two different Pet Smarts. We're going to go to Petco and then two local reptile shops. Let's get it. I was thinking about this while I was in line, like at the drive through. Like when I do my cage setup videos, they're not like super crazy setups or like really super aesthetically pleasing or anything like that. Um, they're just kind of like, okay, you know, I think they're, they're cool. They're definitely not bad. But then I was thinking like, hey, I'm just like serpent design. 
except I shop at PetSmart and Michael's and I'm worse. I'm like Serpa Design, but I'm bad at making good looking enclosures. Yo, I bought this on Black Friday for like a hundred bucks. An amazing selection of branches that we have here. I, uh, I don't think, uh, I don't think we're getting anything at PetSmart, at this PetSmart, I guess. Okay, wait, actually, I was looking down at some substrates and I did find this big tree stump that's meant as like a basking platform. But it's like $50 and it's huge and heavy, but I'm thinking that I can just put it in the corner of this cage and then mount a bunch of branches on top of it. So it kind of looks like a tree. Uh, yeah. Yo! Plus I got a PetSmart gift card too, so I'm okay spending more money on it. Let's go, let's do that. I just finished with PetSmart. I got that big stump. I got some like forest floor substrate to mix in with the eco earth and the moss that I'm planning on doing. I I'm thinking that I don't really need to get too much else. I think I'm just gonna go to Michael's and get some extra plants. Then I'll just use like all the branches and rocks and stuff that I have on hand. Like I really don't need to buy any much extra stuff. So why do all this needless shopping if I don't need to? The Fitness Gram Pacer test is a multi- Every time I come to the store, they like rearrange where the greenery is and I have to hunt around for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Oh. Oh. Anyway, uh, I can't find any like larger, just like denser plants. It's just sort of these thin picks, but uh, I'll make use of them. Okay, unrelated, but like all these jars and containers, I just, I want to buy all of them. I just, I think cool containers are really cool. And I just, I wish I had more things to store in something like a glass container. But there's even more greenery than I realized. Check it out. Big greenery. Look at my gloves. So step one of this process, we're gonna take out Athena, I'm gonna lock her in this small plastic prison, uh, and then I'm gonna remove her decorations and sort them into two groups, which is stuff I can use, right? And then stuff I'm not gonna use. Probably a lot of the stuff I'm not gonna use is a lot of the stuff that, coincidentally, is the stuff I need to clean. Uh, the majority of the branches that I wanna continue to use in her cage have actually been left kind of poopless, which is very cool. I'm still gonna take them out and clean them if need be. The reason I'm wearing gloves is because as I said, Baron's racers are mildly venomous. Uh, she's not gonna kill me, but she is a little food aggressive and is a little jumpy because I don't handle her, handle her all the time. So safety first when you're handling these sort of animals. Hey, Athena. Hey, buddy. Hey. Oh, there we go. Very good, Athena, very good. Oh, look at her. I rarely get to have her out. She's just shed too. She's just, just such a beautiful snake, man. People really miss out when, when they, they're afraid of snakes. Anyway, bag secured. So a lot of these decorations are actually zip tied to each other to make sure that they don't fall down. So I'm going in and cutting the zip ties. And it's about here that I realized that this cage is dusty and gross. So I put a mask on so I don't suffocate myself with snake particles. But yeah, we're just taking everything out, removing it from the mesh, seeing what we can salvage and what we can not. That was so tiring, getting that old cage down and getting this new cage up, exhausting. This is gonna be such a bitch to move when I move out of my mother's house, inevitably. Here it is, I'm gonna go prepare the substrate and let's take a look at some of the decorations we have. Okay, so here's what we're working with. This is a combination of all the stuff that I bought at Michael's and a lot of the stuff that was already in Athena's cage prior to, to moving. So, you can see we got all these just random plants and all that kind of stuff. I'm also going to use the zip ties to um, zip a lot of the branches together and also take some of these flatter, longer leaves um, and tie them to some of these branches so that they look a little bit more like trees. It's not going to be totally accurate, but uh, we'll see how it comes out. We got some other rocks here just for bases. We got some smaller zip ties to make it happen. And of course, this absolute homunculi monster of a tree stump. Um, I'm excited to build this. There's a lot of cool stuff here, so let's build a cage. 
So the substrate mixture that I'm doing is not overly complicated or crazy. It's just a bunch of eco earth, some forest floor, uh, as well as some wetted sphagnum moss that I had lying around that I didn't use. Mix it all together and boom, you get a nice kind of foresty substrate. Uh, you can see with this stump, you gotta bury it into the substrate so it's not sitting directly on top. Generally, you wanna do that with all sorts of heavy decorations because if you balance it directly on top of the substrate, eventually the substrate's gonna set in and those decorations may shift a little bit, which could lead to any decorations on top of them collapsing or even potentially hurting your reptiles. And here I'm just adding in as many of the branches from her previous cage as I possibly can. I wanted to be able to maintain her ability to climb throughout the entirety of the cage rather than just in some smaller areas. So before I add all the plants, I just want to make sure that all the layout is good. She can rest and climb in pretty much any area of the cage. Uh, before I end up adding all the plants and that kind of stuff on. Which is pretty much what I'm doing right here. I decided to start with adding all the plants on that I thought would look like leaves on the tree branches and stuff. That way I can get all the uses of my zip ties out of the way first since these are the things that would be the hardest to implement. But in my opinion, I think they're the most important for creating the visual look of the cage that I want. So that's why I wanted to get out of the way first. And then right here, I'm starting to add a lot of the ground plants, which as you'll probably see, half of the stuff I just ended up not using because it ended up looking a little bit too cluttered. And also you can kind of see me struggle over trying to cut up these ferns. The wire cutters I had just weren't doing it. And I was sort of slicing them up into small pieces to try to put them all over the bottom of the cage. and. I ended up not using nearly as many as I wanted to, but I had to sort of perform a balance between wanting to make the cage look super lush and dense and green and also making it look cluttered. And it's done! Let's go! Uh, I think overall it turned out pretty much as I expected it to. It's nothing like super crazy or anything like that, but I do like the larger presence of these flatter tree looking leaves in all the branches that I had put on for her. Overall, I think it looks a lot less cluttered than her previous cage, and if I need to remove like specific parts, like specific branches and that kind of stuff, I don't think it'll be a problem. I think the only gripe that I have is I didn't include any specific hiding infrastructure for her. Obviously there's like a bunch of places in the cage where she can hide and she has been hiding for the past few days using it and it seems okay, but I may need to change around the layout of the floor just to give her like a cave or whatever to live in. But for right now, she's snuggling up underneath the big tree stump and that seems to be an appropriate hide for her so far. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already or don't. But anyway, thanks for spending time with me.